Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tradesman Experience. This is the podcast built by Tradesmen for Tradesmen. My name is Josh, and I will be flying solo on the mic and in front of the camera this week. When the opportunity presents itself for me to do these episodes alone, <clears throat> I always try to dive into something that has been rattling around in my brain for a while, long enough where I can kind of externalize it, structure it out in a way, and hopefully <clears throat> do it in a, in a manner in which I can create a conversation out of this. And the topic that I'm going to dive into tonight is the pain of leadership. We talk so much about leadership. That's kind of what this podcast is built around. It's what my coaching is built around. And we talk a, about a lot of the things that you need to do to implement leadership, build leadership, develop leadership within yourself. But the area that we don't really dive into is the pain. The pain that leadership causes or the pain that leadership kind of holds for you as you go on this journey and developing yourself and developing others. So I'm going to attempt to dive through that on the on on this conversation tonight <clears throat> setting alone and and I've kind of just blocked out a the, the first three things that I want to bullet point rather and then I'm going to org organically allow my thoughts and and feelings on this matter kind of evolve as we go and uh, you know if, if you're going to go down the path of leadership you need to begin by defining what leadership is or what a leader is. You need to paint a clear picture of that. I think so often people confuse themselves that title and position is leadership because that title and the position holds influence. And the title or position holds authority. It doesn't necessarily hold influence. Leadership is influence, but you need to define what that leadership looks like to you or define what that leader is. The second step is you have to make a decision to be better than that definition. So that definition immediately creates a minimal standard. It creates a ceiling, if you will. You have to make a decision to be better than that. You have to make a decision where on your off days, you can perform at the definition of leadership, your definition of leadership. So the third part is after you define what a leader is, after you make the decision to be better than that definition, you now have to evaluate yourself. Self-awareness, self-awareness, self-awareness. It's something that I talk about often because it's where the journey begins. You have to evaluate your behavior. You have to evaluate your habits, your vices, your distractions, your emotions, your mindset your thought process. How do you think and why do you think that way? See, if you're going to make a decision to be a leader, you're making a decision to elevate yourself in a way that's going to pull people into that direction, pull people up to that level that gives them the opportunity to improve themselves, to better their lives, better their health, better their position in the company, better their social circle. You're creating an opportunity to pull people up and elevate them in a way that just improves them as an individual. When you evaluate yourself, <clears throat> you have to be very deliberate in understanding your story 
and you have to separate yourself from that story, from that old story, from whatever it is that you're telling yourself or that someone else has told you along the way that you have attached yourself to, you have embedded that into your identity, you have to separate yourself from that. See, it's it, we have no, uh, no impact or no influence over where we were born. We have no impact or decision on uh, who brought us into the world. You have a decision on how that story impacts you. And I'm not implying that everyone has a bad story. And I'm not implying that you should separate yourself from the people that helped you begin your journey and your life. What I'm telling you is you have to understand what that story is. What is that narrative that is on a loop in your mind? And how does that relate to who you used to be? And how does that refrain you from being who you want to be? When I hear people say, well, I'm just not smart enough. I'm, I'm just not good enough at that. I'm not strong enough. I'm not this. I'm not that. That's just projection of a story. It's kind of like a video projector, right? If you were to plug it into someone and shine it on the wall and play a reel, you would see what that story is. You would hear what that narrative really sounds like. And if you're going to make the decision to be a leader, you have to separate yourself from that. Take the pieces from it that are beneficial. Take the lessons from that story that, that are beneficial and separate yourself from the rest of it and begin writing a new story. If you're going to define what a leader is and define what a leader does, and you have to make a decision to be better than that, that's part of writing that story. That's a very good beginning to writing that story. And then you need to understand as you evaluate yourself what areas you need to start improving. What are your vices, distractions, and habits? How do they allow you the opportunity to improve? If you're going to build yourself into a leader, you have to build yourself into a version of a leader that at least you would follow. If you look at the hierarchy of management and the overturn of management, it shocks me when somebody promotes into a management role they immediately forget why they hated that manager before them because they plug themselves into this toxic, inefficient programming of what a manager is. And then they just force people to perform based on usually arbitrary metrics or metrics that the individuals don't understand. So you have to build yourself into a version of a leader that at least you would follow. You have to, you have to be at least that. The my first company, in the HVAC company, you know, I, I've shared on here before that my my business plan was to not be outworked. That was that was my entire business plan. I didn't understand anything about finances and marketing. I just knew that my business plan was to not be outworked. My leadership plan was to be the leader that I never had. Whether that was in personal, whether that was in professional, whether that was social, my leadership plan was to be the leader that I never had. So when you start getting into uncharted territory, the fear of the unknown sets in. And then you start to question your decision question your behavior because you don't know how this is going to impact or influence other people. 
but you have to work to constantly build and evolve and grow and grow that version of yourself. When I look at a leader, I will tell you that integrity outweighs perfection. Now I'm going to say that again. Integrity outweighs perfection. I want that person to be real. I want that individual to make mistakes. I want them to be vulnerable. I want them to be transparent. I want them to be emotionally strong. I want them to be driven, perseverant. I want them to have a plan. I want them to set the example of what they expect out of me. So integrity outweighs perfection. When we start down this course, there are there's going to be plateaus, there's going to be peaks, and there's going to be valleys. And the peaks and the plateaus will often offer the seduction of success. It will make you feel like you are a better leader than you really are and that you don't have to continue to improve. And I'm saying this from experience, from real, real life experience, and not just once, but time and time again, I have fallen into that role of momentum and given into the seduction of success. And then I become codependent on the person that I used to be, is in you're never the same. You're either growing or you're, you're dying. But when you develop a team, you develop this, th- this perception of leadership, you develop this behavior of leadership, you develop systems uh, that your team can follow, your department or your company can follow. When you kind of pull back on working and developing yourself, you immediately become codependent on all of those things that you've developed and supported because you believe that that's what makes you look good. And I have done it. I have been there. I have been very codependent on my team and the systems that we created and the seduction of success. Because when you get that momentum, it's easy to take your foot off the gas. When you do that, you go from really growing and developing yourself to self-sabotaging yourself. Because that narrative or that story starts to change again where now you say things to yourself that I deserve this and you you begin this story of justification and these fabricated excuses as to why now you allow yourself back to the distractions back to the vices back to the behaviors that didn't support you to get this far They didn't support you in developing this version of yourself or the success that you are experiencing. So you have to stop self-sabotaging. Another side of self-sabotaging is saying that I don't deserve this, that I shouldn't be here. Kind of that imposter syndrome sets in and that you don't believe that you're the right person, that you're not smart enough, that you're not equipped enough, that you don't communicate well enough, you don't connect with people well enough that you don't have the right skill set or the perfect skill set. That's all self-sabotage talk. That's all negative narrative that's going to derail you from progression. And sometimes plateauing is necessary for progression. You need that time to rest and recover and evaluate. You need that time to be able to kind of look behind you and look around you instead of constantly looking forward to make sure that you still have people following you. If you get on this hyperdrive mission of growing and developing yourself and you leave the people on your team behind you, the further you go, the further behind you leave them, the greater the disconnect between you and the team, you and your family, you and your friends. You have to make sure that the impact and the influence that you're having is pulling people with you. It's not going to be at the same pace. It's not going to be at the same rate. And it's not going to be in the exact same direction. Because people have their lane 
They have their own leadership capacity. They have their strengths. They have their weaknesses. But you need to make sure that you're influencing people in a way that pulls them to be better. So one of the questions to ask yourself on this journey is, does my behavior conflict with my expectations of others? This is where you start creating hypocrisy if you can't answer this question. This is where you start going from a leader to chicken shit leadership. This is where you start losing trust in people. And I have seen this happen too. The seduction of success creeps in and then it changes their behaviors in a way where they can justify it. Whether they are going outside of their lane financially, whether it's alcohol, whether it's uh, kind of expanding the, the social parameters uh, of enjoyment. You have, to, uh, you have to ask yourself that question, is, does my behavior conflict with my expectations of others? And see, that's publicly and personally. If you're gonna make the decision to be a leader, there has to be alignment in all areas of your life. And that's an ingredient a lot of people don't consider. That to be a better leader at work, you have to be a better mother at home or a better husband. They have to align. Because if you're gonna create this internal story, if you're gonna rewrite this narrative and build the version of yourself that you believe is going to make a difference, you can't separate those two things. You can't separate the personal from the professional. They have to be in alignment. So you have to ask yourself, does my behavior conflict with my expectations of others? See, if you make the decision to be a leader, you have to know that this is what you signed up for. You signed up to do better in your behavior than everyone else. You made a decision to leave that old version of yourself, to separate yourself from your old story and write a new one. I think too often, and I think we're guilty of it too, that we we kind of glorify leadership. It sounds glamorous. I will tell you that it is the greatest privilege that you can have, but it's also the most difficult thing that you'll ever do. Because you have to rewire yourself. You have to rewrite your story before you expect it from anyone else. Maybe that means you don't get drunk in public anymore. Maybe that means how you decide to communicate and interact with other people is now different or mitigated. Maybe you decide that since there's a logo on the side of your vehicle that you don't drive like an asshole through the middle of town. You have to be hyper aware of your behaviors at all times. Now, if you're going to tell me that you need, you need to unwind and you need to unplug and you need to blow off some steam, then fucking go somewhere where someone doesn't know you and you can act as belligerent or ignorant as you choose. But when you make a decision to take on the responsibility of impacting and influencing other people's lives, that clock doesn't fucking stop. That's all the time. It's all the time. Some of the responsibilities that you have as a leader is you have to create opportunity for your team. You have to create opportunity for your team before you create opportunity for yourself. And if your behaviors publicly or personally 
conflict or contradict your ability to create opportunity for your team, then you're out of alignment. You are not true to doing the things that you said you were going to do, and you're not true to doing the things that you expect from other people. See, when you decide to be a leader, you have to give up stupid. Your life doesn't have to be boring. Okay, I think, I think that's an important point to make right now is your life doesn't have to be boring. But by God, you have to live at a different fucking standard. You have to sit back and go, all right, how I talk to my spouse in public matters. How I talk to my spouse in private matters. So you can't be a, a qual- quality leader in public and be a fucking asshole to your family when you get home. You can't be good to your friends and kind to your social circle and then just verbally assault your family. That's a contradiction. So you have to make sure that you're in alignment. You have to live at a higher standard. You have to behave at a higher standard. You have to minimize the opportunity for people to call you out on your bullshit. So how you treat people should be a reflection of the quality of leader that you decide that you're going to be. As a leader in, in relation to creating opportunity, it's your job to offer guidance. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to be able to answer every question. This doesn't mean that you have to know how to do everything. But you have to offer offer guidance to people, and maybe that guidance is through someone else. You bring in a specialist. Bring, Bring a financial advisor into your company and educate your team on how to create a personal budget. What a gift you can give them if you help them understand money and get their personal finances under control. Because by the way, if they don't have a budget and they don't have their personal finances under control, they're going to blame you that they don't make enough money. So educate them, provide them with that guidance, provide them with resources, provide them with the support that they need. And sometimes that support is time. That support may be patience. That support may also be out there in the grit and the grind and the shit on a bad job till you guys get it finished. That support may be emotional. You have to provide support. You also have to provide flexibility. See, another mistake that leaders make is they impose their own standards of perfection onto other people. And I think there's a fine line there to ride when imposing and managing and controlling the standard and imposing perfection. The more you impose your will, the less likely people are to meet that standard. Because the narrative that they create now is no matter what I do, it's not going to be good enough. And that in their mind creates opportunity for mistakes and failure. You have to give people flexibility. You have to give them room to make mistakes and make decisions. You have to give them the the tools, the resources, and the support to be able to make those decisions and make those failures. But your job as a leader is not to micromanage. See, that is that that creates so much pain for everyone when you micromanage people. Because I've never seen someone micromanage successes. They always hyperfocus on the failures. They always hyperfocus on the negative behaviors. They always fo- hyperfocus on the excuses. So you don't have a leader going out of his way with a micromanagement mentality telling people that they're winning. It always results in a negative. So you have to stop imposing those impossible goals, impossible standards onto people, 
And you have to understand what is realistic. And if that person is lacking in the ability to achieve that realistic goal, then you need to evaluate with that individual why they can't achieve it. Maybe it's a skill set. Maybe it's a lack of understanding. Maybe there's a, a, a different definition that they have of excellence, of standard, of perfection. You need to identify what that is so you can help them create the skills, the tools, the resources, whatever they need, whatever piece is missing. See, a leader is going to provide that guidance. It's going to coach them. And that's going to offer them that opportunity to improve and to meet that standard. Now they can grow. Now they can make more money. Now they can become more valuable. Now they can play a better role on the team. But if you just constantly focus and complain on the things that they're not doing right, and yet you're not you're not consistently creating opportunity to improve their standard and their performance and their operation, then you have no right to complain about the result. Now, if you're sitting there and going, well, it's not my fucking job to make sure that somebody's better, then don't be a leader because it is your fucking job. It is your job to make sure that everyone that you have on your team has the opportunity to meet that standard, that has the opportunity to add value and improve themselves. I'm not saying you have to treat everybody the same. That's bananas. But you have to create the same opportunity. And you allow people to fill that opportunity and fill that role at their capacity. And then you lead. Then you teach. And you help people grow. When you expect perfection, you take the human factor out of it. You remove the concept of that... um, They're people and they have lives. They have bills to pay. They have sicknesses. They have expectations of their own at home. They have good and bad days in their relationships. They're people. They have different past experiences. They have a different thought process than you. I talk about the hardware all the time. People, they're, they're hardwired to process information and emotion a certain way. But their thought process is going to be dictated by their experiences and their perception. See, people have different problems than you. And people handle different problems in different ways. So if you expect to remove the human factor to only achieve perfection, it results in disappointment. It results in frustration and stress. Leadership is fucking hard because there's no perfect formula. There's no perfect balance. Your job as a leader is never done. It should constantly improve and evolve. And you're going to have bad days. You're going to have bad moments. You're going to have difficulties. You're going to have struggles. But your job as a leader, there's no cruise control for leadership. You have to manage that throttle. Depending on the person, depending on the situation depending on the severity of the situation, depending on the hardware that those individuals have, you have to control that throttle. There is no cruise control in leadership. Another piece of leadership that that people don't like is holding people accountable. And it's, if it's really difficult if you are a low level leader, if you are a weak leader, because that ability to hold people accountable is really going to be dictated by the quality of the relationship that you have with that individual. If that individual doesn't really know you, does not trust you, believes that you manage through chicken shit leadership, when you work to hold that 
individual accountable, they're not going to care. They're not going to be invested in correcting it. They're not going to be invested in improving themselves on the matter in which you're trying to hold them accountable. Also, if all you do is have conversations with your team about the things that they're doing wrong, then that expectation starts to be that, well, here comes another negative thing. Here comes another thing that I'm doing wrong. Here comes another thing that, you know, it's right, but it's not good enough. And you can't hold people to a standard that's unattainable. I believe in holding people to a high standard, and I think that standard should be difficult to reach, but you can't put them out there by themselves and expect them to reach it alone. You have to continue to constantly work to evolve you, your team, your systems, your opportunities, your expectations. You have to constantly build those, but do it in a way that the people on your team can access those things. They can achieve those things. Probably the most difficult part of leadership, and, and what I will say is the most painful part of leadership, leadership becomes very lonely. There's a phrase that they say it's lonely at the top. Leadership is a lonely journey. Now you can become part of a team and you can surround yourself with other high performers and you can operate and function as a cohesive unit and you can get a lot of things done. But when you understand the responsibility that you have chosen to take on as a leader and that all fault falls with you, all failure belongs to you, it becomes a lonely position. And a lot of people can't operate at that level being alone. Even if they have a team, at the end of the day, you have to be able to operate that alone. The mental strength, the emotional maturity that takes is very high. Which is why continuing to grow and develop yourself is so important. Because once your leadership position outgrows your leadership capability, that stretch between those two points is, is going to play havoc on you. Mentally, emotionally, probably physically. It's going to damage your relationships. It's going to cause you to, to, to really kind of deteriorate as a leader. It's a lonely position. But if you make the decision to be a leader, if you make the decision that you're going to create the best version of you because the people in your life deserve that, and you're going to do that in a way that creates opportunity for them to surpass you, you have to be very, very, very intentional about who you are. About the choices that you make as a person. About the quality of the relationships that you keep. About the decisions that you make publicly, privately about whether or not you're going to get drunk in public and act like an asshole. About whether or not you're going to get drugged out of your fucking mind over the weekend. See, if, that, if that's part of your identity, then you have failed to rewrite your story. You have to understand what it takes to be an elite leader to be a high-functioning, high-performing leader. Every decision that you make for yourself impacts and influences the people that you choose to lead. And you have to be conscious of that all the time. 
when the when the clock stops at the end of the day, when the boots come off and no one's watching, your integrity dictates the level of leader that you choose to be. And integrity outweighs perfection. Guys, thank you so much for allowing me to kind of mouth dump on here some thoughts that I've been rolling around with lately because truthfully, I've got to experience some of these downfalls in my own life recently. And what a great opportunity for me to get to reflect and evaluate and replan and reprogram and rebuild everything that I am and everything that I'm doing. And you guys are going to see it in the, the quality of everything that we're putting out. The quality of the toolbox rebuild, the quality of the online courses, the leadership training, the coaching, the podcast. I want to make sure that you are getting the best version of me every time. And I thank you so much for the continued support for everybody that I get to talk to on a daily, weekly basis. Even if you guys just send me a message and thank us for the content that we work so hard to put out and providing us with the opportunity to add value to you. You can find Nate on Instagram at NateNewton87. I am on Instagram at The Tradesman Experience. Email is the tradesman experience at gmail.com. Website is the tradesman experience.com and the YouTube channel is the tradesman experience. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. Get out there, get shit done, be proud to be a tradesman. See ya.